we're going to tear down and examine a Virtual Research VR4 stereoscopic head mounted display. I wanted to give you a little bit of a tour of the display and the control box before we started to disassemble it and then we'll have a more detailed look at the guts of the system. So this is the helmet. We have a control box here that's the front panel of the control box, rear panel, and a brick style power supply. Power supply goes into the back of the control box. It's a 16 volt power supply, center positive. The control box front panel has a power switch and a 26 pin dual 1 tenth inch center um, edge connector. It mates to the helmet connector just like this. Insert our helmet connector like this and this leads the cable that goes down to the helmet. On the back panel the control box accepts an S-video input, either monoscopic, one S-video, or stereoscopic, left and right, um, or RGB on a 15-pin high-density D-shell connector. Um, all of this runs at normal NTSC scan rates, RS-170A, 15.75 kilohertz vertical interval. Um, there are two dip switches on the left. One is to select between monoscopic and stereoscopic. On the monoscopic setting, the left eye input is routed to both the left and the right eyes. On the stereoscopic setting, you have to supply two video signals, left and right. Um, there's also a, another dip switch that only relates to the RGB inputs when you're using that, and that selects either sync on green or separate sync. Um, there's an audio input. It's a headphone level 3.5 millimeter stereo headphone connector. Um, you need to drive it at headphone levels. It's a direct feed to the headphones on the helmet. On the front panel, you also have a monitor output. This supplies the left eye view on an either RGB or S video output to an external monitor. It does not support stereoscopy. So that's your control box. The helmet, I've got it parked here on Mr. Head. To wear this helmet, you generally want to open up the adjustments on the back and on the top and then you want to put the face on first and then tilt it back like this adjust the height and tighten up the rear and that will put it on the head to get it off you do the reverse and then pick up the rear and then come off with the front. This allows easier access for people with eyeglasses. Well, we've got a couple of nice things here. If you look inside our helmet, you can see there are two eyepieces and there's a way to adjust the spacing between the eyepieces. You see me doing that there. And that's done with these knobs on the side. Also, um, everybody's got a different fit for their heads, and we can slide the whole system forward and backward to adjust for bigger, smaller heads, um, wearing eyeglasses, and so forth. There's headphones, stereo headphones on the side. They come in two styles. Um, this is sort of an arcade style. They're fixed. Um, they do not contact the ears. We also have a style with Sennheiser 
HD 440s, um, which are swiveled. The headphones are removable. So that's the two different styles. This helmet has a Ascension space pad tracker receiver integrated right here. Cable runs up through here and then is put inside the braid. This is an option, not installed on all helmets. To adjust the helmets, the video quality in the helmets, this is going to be a little hard to see, but there are adjustment pots in here and the user's manual describes how to adjust the brightness, the contrast, um, the color saturation and so forth. Um, there's a set for the left eye, there is a, also a set for the right eye, they're slightly different location. The circuit boards inside are, have the pots oriented differently. So that's the uh, very quick tour of the helmet. Now, we'd like to be able to tear down this helmet. That's a real, relatively straightforward thing to do. You really only need two tools. You need a 530 seconds ball end Allen wrench and a small Phillips head screwdriver. So what we'll want to do is a couple of things. First, we need to loosen some internal screws that are driven by the hex key. And I'll show you this on another helmet that's already disassembled so that you can see what's going on. Inside the helmet shell are two screw receptacles. They're like nuts that are bonded into the shell. You can see one here and there's another one here. They are fastened by these two captive hex screws here and they're somewhat difficult to get at. You need to actually reach in and this is why you need a ball hex key because you'll see that I need to be able to turn these screws from an angle as there are so they're a little hard to get at but these hold the helmet shell in place. So if I come and I look at this one now, I can kind of look inside, find my screws, and begin to undo them. It's one, and the second one is over here. And we just turn until they're unscrewed. You'll also realize that you want to have the lenses pushed together as much as possible so that you can get at these screws. So rather than having the lenses like this, you want to have them like this. Once you've got those hex screws loosened all the way, the next thing you need to do is remove these two knobs. Relatively simple to do. They just unscrew if you grab one and hold it, it keeps the other one steady and you can unscrew the knob. Here it is. The second one is pretty easy. You just open the lens spacing up all the way, the inner pupillary, and then it, the uh, lens is stop motion and the screw comes right off. Finally, to remove the shell, there's five screws on the bottom the little Phillips head screws do the four on the outside first because the fifth one on the inside is a little different. These guys are pretty small so put them in a little cup or a bowl or something hang on to them. They're pretty easy to lose. The fifth screw actually has a backing plate like a nut that holds it in place and all you need to do is just reach in with your finger you'll feel it and just hold it as you turn the screw and you'll feel it loosen up and the plate looks like this it's a little metal threaded a plate with a threaded hole so anyway you're pretty much ready to 
remove the helmet shell. It just pulls straight off like this and you can set it aside and now we get to see the innards 